Welcome back to Everything You Want to Know About, the show where I give you the backstory of the characters no one cares about. Well, it's time for another DC character, and as a cheap tie-in to the movies, I give you the character that somehow got a movie, yet no one knows who he is, the ancient Egyptian madman, the man known as Tethon, or sometimes Theo, the dark reflection of Shazam. I give you everything you want to know about. Black. That. Diving right into it, Black Adam was created by Otto Binder and C.C. Beck and first appeared in the Marvel Family No. 1 in December of 1945. He was created for Fawcett Comics but only appeared in one issue, which gave his backstory. Also had him defeated. So there's that, who would then be dormant for 33 years until DC bought out Fawcett Comics. He would show up in the DC Universe in Shazam number 28 in 1977. There it was revealed that he got his powers from the ancient Egyptian gods. Shu, Hersef, Amon, Zatuli, Apnu, and Menthu. Of course spelling out Shazam. He would show up in all new Collector's Edition Volume 1 number C-58, catchy title I know, where he would try and take on Superman. He would become one of the main villains for Shazam and would go on to join Mr. Mind to create the Monster Society of Evil. Once the Crisis on Infinite Earths reboot happened, his origin was revised in The Power of Shazam in 1944. This new origin made him the son of Pharaoh Ramses II, who would then become a main antagonist for the Justice Society. Then like all DC characters, his origin was once again revised after the New 52 reboot in the DC Universe. In Shazam Volume 1, it was revealed that he is actually a slave in ancient Egypt, and he and his nephew shared the powers from the wizard Shazam until Black Adam killed his nephew. Since then, he has become a closer to an anti-hero, where he will take on other villains if they stand in his way. Currently, he's actually part of the Justice League. Before we get into his full history, let's talk about his powers. Well, basically, he's evil Shazam. The end. Although it is true there is an actual breakdown, he has the stanima of Shu, the swiftness of Horus, the strength of Amun, the wisdom of Zahuti, the power of Aelin, and the courage of Mahen, which breaks down to he's fast, strong, durable, can fly, and has lightning. When he calls the wizard Shazam's name, he is transformed from Theo Adam to Black Adam. Theo Adam is just a man, but Black Adam wields the power of the gods. So let's get into his history. In his original origin, Black Adam is an ancient Egyptian named Teth Adam, or Mighty Human. He was chosen by the wizard Shazam to be his successor. He was given the same powers that later Captain Marvel, aka Shazam, would be given. But Black Adam was corrupted by these powers and he decided he needed to take over the world. The wizard Shazam was unable to take his powers back, so he banished him to a distant star. Black Adam would take 5,000 years to fly back to Earth. That is when we saw the wizard had chosen new champions to take his place. He would battle Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel Jr., and Mary Marvel. They tricked Black Adam into saying Shazam, and 5,000 years of aging caught up to him all at once, and he died. The end. Thank you all for checking out this video on Black Adam. If you want to check out these... Uh, nah, I'm kidding. Uh, of course he comes back. 30 years later, Dr. Savannah resurrects Black Adam with his reincarnation machine as a plot to take down the Marvel family. Dr. Savannah tricked Black Adam into going back in time to destroy the Rock of Eternity where both Shazam and Black Adam's power come from. Dr. Savannah hoped he would take out two birds with one stone. Shazam once again tricked Black Adam into saying his name and punched him so hard he got amnesia. This version of Black Adam was last seen fighting heroes on the five remaining Earths during the Crisis on Infinite Earths event. Once the DC Universe was reset after Crisis, Black Adam got a revised origin. 
Now, Teth Adam was the son of Pharaoh Ramses II. He impressed one of the high priests with all his good deeds, and this priest turned out to be the wizard Shazam. He gave him the power of the gods and the ability to become the Mighty Adam. Terrible, terrible name. Mighty Adam would be the champion of Egypt for centuries. Mighty Adam got corrupted by the wizard Shazam's daughter, Blaze. She talked him into killing the pharaoh and appointing himself the ruler. The wizard Shazam then stripped him of his powers, and once again, centuries of aging caught up with him all at once. Stupid! You're so stupid! The wizard Shazam put the mighty Adam's powers in a scarab necklace and buried both the necklace and Teth Adam's remains in the tomb of Ramses II. In death, Teth Adam's was named Kahim Adam's or Black Adam. During the late 20th century, an archaeologist named Theo Adam uncovered the tomb with his colleague C.C. Batson and his wife Marilyn. Theo became obsessed with Kahim Adam's scarab and killed the Batsons to get it. The Batson's son Billy had become Shazam and Theo realized Shazam's resemblance to C.C. Batson and he figured out that he is a reincarnation of Kim Adam. Theo grabbed the scarab and said the word SHAZAM and was turned into Black Adam. He reveals to Shazam that he killed his parents and of course they start to fight. Shazam defeats him by taking his scarab which removed his powers. Shazam then took Theo to the wizard Shazam and had Theo's memory wiped. But this is only temporary as Blaze reemerged and got Theo Adam's memory back. Once he gets his memories back, he says that Black Adam and Theo Adam are two different personalities. Black Adam stands trial for the murder of the Batsons, but is acquitted because his fingerprints don't match the ones found at the crime scene. Now in a twist, Theo Adam's evil began to take over and take control of Black Adam through mental influence, and it forced him to attack the Justice Society of America. Black Adam would go on to join the Injustice Society. That would only be for a short time because Black Adam would quickly betray the Injustice Society and he helped the Justice Society take them down. He would then help the JSA on many adventures. Shazam would also go on to join the JSA, making for some tension on the team. At one point, Shazam, Hot Girl, and Mr. Terrific went back in time to meet the Mighty Adam before his corruption. This helped Shazam understand Black Adam more, and Shazam would then say that they're not enemies, but they'll never be friends. During this time travel, writers Jeff Johns and David Goyer would take this time to readjust Black Adam's origin. He now came from the fictional North African nation known as Kondak. He served the Egyptian prince Khonfu, who would later be reincarnated as Hawkman. There is no more Blaze in this story, now he gets his rage from the Egyptians conquering his home and killing his wife and children. As Mighty Adam, he goes on to take back his home by any means necessary and killing a lot of people. The wizard Shazam doesn't like this, so he takes the powers back from the Mighty Adam and kills Teth Adam. Black Adam would break away from the JSA and create a new group with Atom Smasher, Brainwave, Northwind, and Nemesis. This was the start of his anti-hero days, and they would dispense justice in their own ways. This group would go on to take over Kondak from a dictator. This would cause them to go to blows with the JSA, eventually ending with Black Adam being the ruler of the nation, but his group was disbanded. During the Infinite Crisis event, Black Adam joined the secret society of supervillains, but only as a way to protect his nation from the group. He was used by Alexander Luther Jr., which is sort of Lex Luthor from Earth 3. Just, just go with it. To power a device that would restore the multiverse, he was freed by Superboy and Nightwing. Black Adam would then become more of a violent nation leader, he killed several supervillains on TV to demonstrate how he would protect Kondak. 
Intergang, a crime syndicate in DC, offered Black Adam two million in gold and a person named Adriana Tomez to curry his favor. Black Adam killed the messenger but kept Adriana around. He was able to give her some of the power of the scarab and she became Isis. Black Adam, with the help of Rene Montoya and the question, would find Adriana's brother Amon. Black Adam would then also give Amon part of his powers to make him Osiris. This would create the Black Marvels. You know, like the Marvel family, except uh, dark and brutal. Oh, that's brutal. The Black Marvels would quickly be attacked by the Suicide Squad. They defeat the squad, but Amanda Waller would use the footage of the event to ruin the Black Marvel's reputation. Okay, now I'm going to need you to follow me on this next part. Osiris has a talking crocodile named Sobek. You know, because comics. Osiris was distraught over killing someone and wanted to give up his powers. So Beck talked him into saying Black Adam's name and turning him mortal. Once mortal, Sobek ate him. He, he just ate him. Turned out, Sobek was famine. You know, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse famine. He was that the whole time. During a battle with the four horsemen, Isis was mortally wounded and while dying, asked Black Adam to avenge Osiris. Black Adam would then attack the neighboring nation of Bayala, trying to find Death, the final horseman that killed Osiris. He started killing millions just to get to Death. Once he found and defeated Death, Black Adam tortured him to find out who sent him. Turns out he was sent by the Science Squad. Get those nerds! Nerd! Nerd! What Black Adam goes to attack them and is subdued. Dr. Savannah tortured Black Adam and then tried to sell him as a living weapon. The JSA jumped in to help their old comrade, and once free, Black Adam went on a worldwide rampage that would be dubbed World War III. He was finally depowered by Shazam, Zatanna, and the Phantom Stranger. They came up with a new spell that not only depowered him, but also changed the magic word that would transform him from Teth Adam into Black Adam. Teth Adam, now depowered, wandered the Middle East, looking for a way to restore his powers. Teth Adam's first idea to get his powers back was to try and resurrect Isis. He broke into a tomb and stole her bones. He also needed her amulet, so he went to Dr. Fate's tower, but only found an imprisoned Felix Faust. Felix informed Teth that the Marvel family broke Isis's amulet into shards and would, he would need to go collect them. In exchange for freeing him, Felix found a way to restore Teth's Adam's powers, although they would drain the magic left over in Isis's bones. Teth Adam was able to recover all the pieces of the amulet and found himself in Fawcett City. He oddly ordered a chocolate egg cream, but that turned out to be what the magic word was changed into, and he turned back into Black Adam. When he got back to Felix, they attempted to resurrect Isis, but her bones crumbled. Distraught, Black Adam left, but it turned out that Felix tricked Black Adam and Isis was resurrected under his power. We next see Black Adam in Gotham City where he comes across a depowered Mary Marvel and he transferred all his powers to her and left in his mortal form. Teth Adam is then found protecting and living in the tomb of Isis and Osiris, killing any potential looters. He finds a sign from Isis that she is still alive. Even though she was being controlled by Felix, Isis was leaving Teth Adams a way to find her. Teth Adam was able to find her and free her. Next, they went to the Rocky of Eternity to restore the Black Adam's powers. They fight Billy Batson, who is now the Wizard Marvel, and take his powers. Isis decided to use her newfound powers to cleanse the Earth of humans. Isis and Black Adam even got Mary Marvel to join them and form the new Black Marvels. They ended up in Kondak, where Black Adam's return was praised, but Isis began killing people. 
Black Adam tried to protect his people but was attacked by B Mary Marvel and Billy Batson, both who have been corrupted by Isis. Black Adam is convinced to give his power back to the wizard Shazam, who takes the power from Isis, Mary Marvel, and Billy. Then he turned Teth Adam and Adriana into statues. During the Blackest Night event, a resurrected Osiris tried to free them from their statues, but failed. Now we get to the new 52, so forget all that backstory and character development I just gave you, we're starting fresh. The new Black Adam origin comes from an ancient slave boy named Aman. Aman's uncle was able to help him escape slavery, but he was injured in the process. The wizard Shazam gave Aman power so he could help his people, but with his first act he shared his powers with his uncle to help him heal. His uncle's name was Adam, by the way. I think you see where this is going. Adam kills Aman and takes the power for himself, and the new Black Adam sets out for revenge against his enslaved people. Flash forward to modern times, Dr. Savannah found Black Adam's tomb and was able to free him into the modern times. Black Adam then has a big punch up with Shazam. Shazam once again tricks Black Adam into returning to his mortal form and rapidly aging and dying. He says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. Basically calling back to his original fight with Shazam. Later in contact, two people named Amen and Adriana resurrect Black Adam to help him overthrow their dictator and help protect Kondak. Returning Black Adam to his original role, the protector of Kondak. Then we get to Rebirth, where all that continuity I told you to forget now matters again and some of the new 52 stuff counts or doesn't. I don't even know at this point. Well, the first time we see Black Adam in Rebirth, he is part of the Council of Immortals, a group of the oldest beings on Earth. This includes Vandal Savage and Hot Girl. The only main storyline to note is that Shazam opened the doors to various magic lands, which were various openings to magical realms. Black Adam and Dr. Savannah then go to the Monsters Land to free the Monster Society of Evil. Mr. Mind released the seven deadly enemies of man and they all attack Shazam and Lady Shazam. Black Adam changed his mind and tried to help, but then was held captive by Mr. Mind. Shazam frees Black Adam and they both close the doors to all the magical lands. The last we see of Black Adam, he's now working with the Justice League. Not really sure how or when that happened, Look, there's a lot of comics to read. Give me a break. Before I go, we've seen Black Adam outside of the comics, so let's quickly talk about that. The first time we see him in a cartoon, it is The Kid Superpower Hour with Shazam in 1981. He was voiced by Lou Scheimer, and he was tricked multiple times into saying Shazam and turning himself into dust. Ugh. Idiot! He was mentioned in Justice League Unlimited, but was never shown. He was on a bit of hiatus between 1981 and 2010, but came back big. He showed up in Batman the Brave and the Bold, voiced by the amazing John DiMaggio. Wizard betrayed me when he learned I could not be controlled. He also showed up in Superman Shazam, The Return of Black Adam, voiced by Arnold Voslo. He would then show up in Justice League Action in 2016, voiced by Gary Cole. And of course, now he's back and bigger than ever, showing up in both DC League of Super Pets and his own self-titled movie, both time played by The Rock. I always wondered why there was plans for the Black Adam movie dating all the way back to 2014. Like, who cares about Black Adam? Why does he get his own movie? After researching this episode, I kind of get it. He's a very interesting character and has more to him than just being part of Shazam's rogue gallery. He's been given some major death by the DC writers, and I really hope we get to see some of that when we see him on the big screen. So what do you think? Are you now excited for the Black Adam movie? I know I am. 
Let me know what you think in those comments, and share this video with anyone asking, who the heck is Black Adam? I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard, until next time, hold on to your hold slots.